Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today to mark the retirement of This Is A Party we are going to go through the evolution of This Is A Party all the way from prototype to the very dangerous machine that you guys know today. Um, so we're just going to bring you in really close and I'm going to go through all of these one by one talking about what worked and what didn't work uh, and yeah, what I think could be could have been done better just some design ideas so that you guys can take some stuff away and learn from the experience also I thought it'd be quite cool to see uh, this is a party grow up in a very short space of time uh, so let's start over here on the left with the purple guys so let's start with something that was never even actually on camera this is the pre prototype shell for this is a party and originally this was supposed to house my Arduino system and you can see in here this footprint is incredibly small uh, it was also based on my old ideas of protecting the wheels uh, but I also decided that um, maybe we don't need to do that because yeah I needed a little bit more space inside here to jam in electronics and the only real way I could do that was by removing the wheel guards entirely and having the wheels exposed and only just started messing around with TPU so I thought that maybe I could survive with TPU wheels and not have to have them guarded and I'm very very glad that I made that change also uh, this is the very very first version of the chassis I ever printed it has a 3D printed motor guard on here and in the first the build video the very first build video for this is a party I had a different version of this chassis, the larger, wider version, and I snapped this uh, PLA printed mount by hand because, of course, the layer lines go this way up the part, which means you can literally grab hold of the top here and just snap it. I'm not going to do that because I really quite like this chassis. Um, I would actually like to, yeah, build this into a pseudo bot at some point and use it for something, uh, even if it doesn't have a real weapon or anything on it. Just I would like the I like the chassis. It looks pretty cool. <laughs> Um, and it would be nice to have that driving around. So then we go on to the very, very first version of this as a party. Now, uh, this thing is basically just a quick update and improvement off of that one. So it was widened out so that there was enough room in here for electronics. And I added this, an aluminium motor mount. And it literally just glued into a hole in this chassis shape here and there was just two small walls that it kind of epoxied into and you can kind of see just how well that went it exploded multiple times uh, so this was its very very first event and being a PLA plastic it was rather brittle and being that it was held onto the motor and dishing out monster hits and taking monster hits uh, on just a small section of uh, PLA it just shattered along the layer lines and it was repaired multiple times during the event and nothing really helped it it was also really really close on weight mostly because of this aluminium chunk this aluminium here is three mil thick and it is ridiculously overkill for a motor mount especially considering that it was being bonded directly into a 3d printed part where the layer lines were always going to be the weakest point uh, so in the next version i decided to change that and do something differently speaking of we'll go on and have a look at the new version uh, the next version so this here is now version 2 and it is a different color because it's actually in a PLA plus material because back at this time I thought that PLA plus uh, was going to be tougher than the uh, the PLA and it turns out it's just stronger which makes it more brittle uh, which makes it kind of bad for combat robots also this now has a Lexan motor mount in here which is good and bad uh, bad because the actual uh, design of this thing and the actual cut of this is inaccurate because I cut it all by hand so the 90 degree corners and stuff aren't 90 degrees and that meant when the motor mount cut in there uh, the weapon hit the ground a lot to the point where I had to add tape in underneath the prongs at the front 
to actually even have the weapon spin at all. And even then it still hit the ground more on more than one occasion. <laughs> But at the same time, it was a pretty good test of uh, this robot and what it might actually be able to do. Also, I should say there was another difference between these two versions. Uh, so the first version ever had these purple brushless motors. Uh, this is a, a busted one here. Uh, had these purple brushless motors that have bigger M3 bolts to attach to the robot, uh, which is basically the only real difference between them uh, is they have the bigger M3 bolts. And then the new version had an orange version of the same motor by the same company that uses M2 bolts and I did that basically to save weight or to try and save weight because this guy was pushing right up close and the top cover was basically tape in the first version and the second version we actually put some plastic in there. So we now move on to the third version. So the third version I realized that I needed uh, a, a bit more strength in the whole chassis. I realized that the PLA Plus was a bad idea and I also realized that I needed the uh, motor mount to be as accurate as possible. So this motor mount in here is a different form of toughened PLA uh, which I thought was going to be a pretty good choice here and in actual fact you can see it took a hit up in the top corner here uh, I think at one point when I was upside down uh, in a fight and it survived pretty well to be honest especially considering it's literally just a piece of uh, PLA uh, so this version fought twice the other the previous two versions only fought once each because they had their problems and then they were promptly uh, replaced this guy fought twice once at uh, Australian Nationals and once at a meet here at ARC and the major change between those two was the roll hoop because with these guys each time it had gone upside down the weapon had stopped it had hit the ground the weapon had stopped and that meant that I couldn't then self right I could only get back up on the wheels if somebody actually knocked me around um, and knocked me back over on the wheels yeah, so that was, um, <laughs> that was something I needed to fix and the roll hoop was the way to do that. By sitting the roll hoop there when the whole robot was upside down, the motor could spin properly uh, and everything just kind of worked. It allowed uh, the weapon to be spinning and I could then hit that into a wall and I could flick myself back over and I could keep the fight going and keep the fight going well. Also, in under here, you'll see that in this version, I'll see if I can see that. There's that little plastic triangle that is printed into the design. This here is a seat for the motor mount because in the previous version, that doesn't exist. You can just kind of see the uh, the Lexan and it is literally like the first version. Uh, it's just kind of glued into a slot between layers in the plastic. Uh, and that was also part of the reason why this motor mount was very, very inaccurate. Um, also, I should say while we're on the subject, uh, the brittleness I was talking about, you can see there's some glue in underneath the pods here. This is one of the big hits that this thing got, one of its first ever fights. It actually ripped this pod clean off. Uh, so, there was some design changes in order to fix all that up. Also, I should say too, that these guys have ho a hollow in under here because this guy was not and I needed to try and save weight. So I skimmed some weight out from in underneath here because there was never going to be any electronics or anything in the front here so this didn't need to hold anything so that it was completely useless to have a bottom face on there essentially. Um, but doing that did introduce the vulnerability where the pods could break off and you can see up in here there's a whole bunch of hot glue and stuff where I had uh, this ABS part start to break along the layer lines uh, and we'll talk about how we fix that in just a second. Um, yeah, and this guy also started having aluminium tape and things applied rather than epoxied on aluminium, mostly for weight saving and because the aluminium tape did a pretty good job in on the whole. Uh, this was also the first one where I started to find a little bit of a vulnerability in terms of these slanty walls here that go down this way. Getting hit here by a horizontal spinner meant the robot got thrown up and away which was not good especially at nationals where I got thrown over a wall. So then we come over to the next iteration of the design and a couple of things change here in rapid succession. So first of all there is a chamfer 
in here on the wall that connects between the front two prongs and the actual base plate. This was to strengthen up the issues that we saw in here and also the issues that allowed uh, this front pontoon here to snap off completely. Um, also, I believe, from memory, the, um, the slit between the two pods is actually wider here. Not a whole lot wider, but just a little bit wider because of course we had the issue in this version where uh, the weapon actually hit the pod and ripped it completely off. We didn't have that happen in this version, but it was something that I was mindful of. So I just widened those out just a little bit. And I think, as you can see here, we did take some damage in around here. I'm not sure if that was from our own weapon or not. Uh, but once again, though, we had the 3D printed uh, plastic motor mount up here. Uh, and in underneath, we actually added back some of that floor panel uh, and upgraded the strength of the motor mount plastic in there so that uh, we have a more rigid frame on the hull and we had less flex. The white version here has actually got quite a lot of, quite a lot of flex. Let's see if I can do this well enough on camera. I mean, this part is breaking because it has gone through fights, but there was that much flex, or just a little bit less than that much flex in the original version, uh, even without the, uh, the splits and the hot glue holding everything back together. Uh, also, this version, you'll notice uh, we have mirrored where the brushless motor position is. That's because with the way that these uh, motors mount down to the robot, with the brushless motor position on this side, when the weapon was hitting the ground, it was actually uh, loosening the bolt off. So by swapping the motors from one side to the other, literally just by mirroring the whole robot uh, in CAD, I then got the nut to tighten if the uh, as the weapon hits things, including hitting the ground. Hitting the ground, of course, is the, the worst one because it applies consistent force to it. Uh, but even in big hits, it was just slowly but surely loosening off, which is not ever something that you want to have happen. Uh, so in here, we also did keep the bunny ears, but we didn't actually add any design features to allow the bunny ears to exist. They just got hot glued in. Same with both of these two versions. And I think that's all of the changes here. You can see though that now that the frame is stronger and this frame is a lot more rigid than the old one, there's only a little bit of give in that and there's no real give through here. Um, we actually started to have this motor mount break and it was basically a successive failure from here all the way down where every time we improve something, something else would break because the weapon is just so strong that we really needed to find out what works to get the thing to actually hit and hit hard. Speaking of the weapon, back in these days it was this guy, a double tooth bar. This is a uh, five millimeter thick hard ox from memory and around about 25 grams of solid steel. So it was a very, very chunky weapon. And this one you can see has wear patterns and damage in the teeth and stuff where it has fought. It's also got some nicks out of it where it's been hit by other weapons and things. Uh, it's, uh, it's had a long, hard life, that poor blade. Uh, so this guy here, uh, yeah, as you can see, we, uh, we had the weapon mount explode a couple of times. So that's about it for version four. So moving on from this version, um, have, as I said, like we're, we're finding the weak points and replacing them. So in version five, the major weak point that got replaced was the motor mount. And this time we moved up to carbon fiber drone arms, or at least small sections thereof. This was a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a shot in the dark, uh, but it actually proved to work really well. These things are quite lightweight and quite strong, uh, having taken multiple hits and also dished out quite a few big hits uh, in its time and staying together really, really nicely. Um, it, yeah, this, this motor mount was definitely the way to go on that. Also, you can see here we had a few weight issues with this particular design. Pretty sure I printed the shell uh, with some more infill than I had in past attempts. 
Obviously, really the only place the infill actually exists is in these motor standoffs out the back here. So the infill percentage on these is basically not really all that useful. Uh, they should be at kind of 5 or 10%, and I think I printed this somewhere in the 20 range, and it, uh, it caused some issues. So we had to nibble out some of the base down here, uh, and we had to drill some holes, and we had to cut some of the top off this carbon fiber drone arm, and yeah, it wasn't all that good. But it does allow me to show you down in here, where you can see that not only is there a triangle that mounts the, uh, the carbon fiber drone arm, but there is one coming up from the base as well uh, to give it a solid connection down into the base plate, which is of course the, uh, the solid mounting for everything around here. This guy, this is where we started to see some good, good success with this robot. Um, with the new arm in and the weapon on, everything worked pretty well in this particular version. Uh, and we're starting to see some really, really big hits and also not self-destructing, which was a massive, massive bonus for this machine. However, um, the prongs had always kind of been a bit of an issue. They have these slopes on the side that I was talking about before where being hit by them, uh, by being hit on them by a horizontal can make the whole robot fly away. There are also only two tiny little points and the angle of them means that a lot of people kind of hit this ridge here rather than the point uh, and get in underneath. And also, you know, this angle is really nice for a wedge to come in and pick me up on the side and stuff and throw me around. So getting under people to get the weapon engaged was starting to become a bit of an issue. And that's where basically the final real massive uh, body design change uh, to This Is A Party came in. Also, you can see here, uh, this version still just had the, uh, the bunny ears glued in, and there was two of those glued in at one point, but they, uh, they broke off in a fight, I believe. So, then we changed entirely. We did a brand new chassis design uh, to hopefully, or to improve the issues that I was facing with the points. This was the first kind of major design change and I was actually quite nervous about this because by this point, uh, some people really liked This Is A Party and I mean, I really liked This Is A Party and people really liked the look of This Is A Party. So I was a little bit worried about changing the design and getting a bit of backlash uh, for doing that. But uh, at the end of the day, this robot was always designed to dish out the big hit and the, uh, the form of that chassis was interfering with that so it had to go that was just the way it works i mean when i build robots i build them for a purpose sometimes that purpose is to look good uh, and sometimes that purpose is to hit hard and yeah you can't have both uh, especially not all the time sometimes you can but it's it's quite a, a rare robot when that happens anyway uh this guy was the first of the new design um and you can see at the back here, this time I actually added sections printed into the design, not only for strength up along this area, but also for um, actually adding in the bunny ears correctly. Because I believe in one of these guys, we got some cracking along the top of the ridges. It's in one of these, uh, maybe. Oh, it's actually in this one. There you go. It's actually after I put the mounts in. Interesting. I thought that that had happened previously too, but that's also partly why I'm making a video like this, so I can keep all of this stuff straight in my head. So, the new chassis uh, is actually designed to be lighter than the old chassis, uh, and also it came with another improvement we'll talk about in half a second, but I'll talk about the lightening of this chassis first. So, Previously, both uh, prongs in under the chassis had the, uh, the floor mount all the way through them, and I realized that this was actually wasted away. I also realized that printing the side over here that doesn't have the weapon involved in it, uh, like thick as I have with this one, is actually also a waste of weight, because uh, even though in this case it did actually get kind of destroyed, um, didn't need to be massively strong, all it needed to be was there, essentially, and uh, actually touch the ground at the bottom here. 
So this side needs to be strong and needs to be well secured and really well connected to the base. But this side, eh, it doesn't matter all that much. We can save a bit of weight there, so that's where we're gonna save some weight. And the other thing that we did to save weight was something that I originally thought was gonna be a downgrade and it ended up being a massive, massive upgrade. And that was switching to the single tooth bar. This thing has been just a complete game changer in uh, This Is A Party's in the entire development, basically. All of the cone-shaped versions, the pointy-shaped front versions of This Is A Party, at least from memory, all run the bar, and then we upgraded to this single tooth disc, oh, single tooth bar, and oh my gosh, the improvement on weapon hits with this new thing involved was just phenomenal. Absolutely crazy. Um, I really do want to do a video at some point as to the differences between single tooth and double tooth because on paper going from this guy to this guy is a massive downgrade. This is 25 grams, this is 22, 23 grams uh, and also the moment of inertia is way way higher on the bar uh, but the bite is lower so the moment of inertia on this guy is much lower, A, because of weight, and B, because of shape, but its bite is a lot higher, and it's the bite which has actually made all of the difference. I'm not going to ramble too much about this. Like I said, I'll probably do a video on this in the future. If you want to uh, hear me ramble about single tooth versus double tooth and how that's important and what that all means, uh, leave me a comment down below to tell me that you're interested, and we'll, uh, we'll try and do something like that in the future. Um, yeah, so... At this point, this is a party's design kind of stagnates a little bit. You can see that we've got three chassis here, which are all basically the same. Uh, the newest version does have a slight change and upgrade to it, but these guys do basically stay pretty much the same because we're onto a really good robot. We're starting to dish out really big hits. We're starting to split people open and toss batteries around the arena. Uh, so when you're onto a winner, you kind of stick with that. The only major thing was weapon balance. After a few fights, uh, the weapon started to become unbalanced and that uh, did actually cause some of the issues and some of the, the losses and things that we had. Uh, and rebalancing that weapon was a big key to keeping everything going. Also, um, even though the chassis was getting split, and braking and all of this kind of stuff. Um, as I said before, these side panels here were always designed to be thinner and just kind of take those hits because we didn't really need the weight there. These pods don't even really need to be there. They're there for the look of the robot. We could remove this entire section and just kind of bulk up the front here a little bit and the whole robot would work exactly as it does at the moment, but we are kind of wasting a little bit of weight to keep a symmetry to the design and to the chassis uh, so I tried to keep that weight as light as possible but as you can tell after a couple of uh, continued meets and stuff because both of these two chassis fought multiple meets from memory um, and yeah after multiple meets they do uh, they do break to the point where they're completely unusable and they need to be redone so there we go, that is basically it for the design. The only real change here is the acetate on this front wedge. Now, I got some good comments from you guys after the last flight recap video, so I know that I can improve my acetate use, and it's really quite hard to see this on camera. If I catch them in the light of the, um, the filming lights here, you can see them better, uh, but other than that, they're pretty hard to see because they're thin, transparent plastic, so they're a little bit difficult to see. Uh, but other than that, this chassis doesn't really have any major upgrades or improvements over any of the other designs. Uh, it's still got the bunny ears. The bunny ears, actually, I think I bent back a little bit further, so everything's sitting a little bit higher. I'm really, I never really got the bunny ears to be perfect. I kind of, I put them in and they did work, but a lot of the time I found that, especially after having the single tooth disc, just continuing to spin the weapon, after a hit meant that I kind of bounced all over the arena and I landed on my wheels. It's also one of the reasons this is a party is actually going away is because 
uh, to, for this as a party to work, it has to have that crazy unpredictability. It has to be able to bounce all over the arena uh, and survive bouncing all over the arena. And the new arena is just not really set up for that. It's got the low wall on one side, and then it's got the, uh, the big raised wall on the other, both of which I could bounce over quite easily. And also it has the very, very large pits, uh, which have been a bit of a detriment to us. So yeah, it's time to build something different. It's time to build something else, probably something invertible so we don't have to rely on bouncing around on a weapon uh, to survive. Yeah, but there's a lot of really cool stuff in This Is A Party that I have learned um, going through this. Uh, yeah, stuff like extra bracing on my motor mounts using the purple guys with the three millimeter bolts because these three millimeter bolts are a lot stronger. That's actually one of the things I really should have talked about back here is when I moved from uh, this guy up to this guy, I changed back from the orange motor mount, uh, from the orange motor to the purple motors again. For, and the main reason is for these bolt spacings and bolt sizes. The two mil bolts will bend after a certain amount of hits Whereas the three mil bolts, I've never had issues with them bending and breaking. Uh, I have had issues with them loosening off when I don't Loctite them, but that is everything in combat robots, always Loctite your bolts. Um, but yeah, with the two mil ones, I did have issues with them bending in place. And that is never a fun time because that means that the position of the motor changes and then the blade can hit the ground or is too high or whatever. It just, it affects the, um, the reliability of the machine. Also, I've learned that these um, motors with the ESCs on the end of them are really, really good for allowing uh, big, big spinning weapons and quite powerful spinning weapons to exist on a robot. Uh, and that, yeah, on the whole, these electronic stacks are pretty reliable. So yeah, something new is going to happen, I'm pretty sure. If it doesn't quite get there before next month, then we will just throw this iteration of This Is A Party straight back in to the arena, uh, but there will be no more changes or anything made to This Is A Party. I did have another plan for out wedging wedges or out uh, performing wedges, but the acetate seems to have worked pretty well for what I wanted, so we don't need to do that upgrade, and instead I think I will uh, try that upgrade on a new robot. Um, yeah, so there you go. I hope you guys have enjoyed this kind of run down memory lane of This Is A Party. Uh, it is going to be a little bit sad to see him go, but I am also quite excited to build something new to see if I can get this level of power back into a robot that is going to just be a little bit more reliable, perform a little bit better, is going to be able to drive upside down without having to ping pong around the arena after every single hit. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's the way it all goes. You build the arena that you have, and uh, yeah, at the moment, this is a party is not built for that arena, so we need to do something new. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.